Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about companionship. Now not human companionship. This is companionship with your pet or it's con companionship with your, you know, out in nature because many a time a person gets to know a little bird and that little bird becomes a friend in that way. So that is companionship as well. That, that's connecting to nature and that's understanding it. But we have pets. We have dogs and cats and horses, um, rabbits, which I love, um, you know, and, and some other little critters. I, I know someone that had a, a pet rat and that friendship with that little animal was just so clear that it was all based in love. The young man just loved, loved his pet, you know, and really took good care of it all of the time. But, you know, sometimes our pet is trying to tell us something, you know, and I would love us all to be able to deepen that relationship with our pets, you know, make that connection a little bit stronger. Even if you don't have in your home a, a dog or a cat or a bird or, or some little critter, you know, you may have one out in nature that you see every day. And you may not even realize you are building up a friendship with that animal. It's getting to know you. It sees you every day and you can learn how to talk to it as well but I love when I see you know a child or or an adult you know embracing their animal in love the the pet that they love so much that they're down on their hands and knees and they're telling it how wonderful it is you know they're talking in so much love and, and you see the animal responding. You see the dog or the cat responding, you know, even putting its paws up on the person. And the other thing I just see is not just the physical animal doing this, but I always watch the angels helping an animal to respond even more. And just seeing an animal you know, that dog or cat or even horse, you know, soaking up that love that the human being is pouring on their pet. And we have to learn in a sense to, how would I say, sometimes the angels do say to me, Lorna, you know, I have a little dog called Tiwi. And sometimes I would say, Tiwi is a little rascal but she's just so full of life. And she is a little rascal, you know, but I love her dearly. And sometimes I do give out to her. I do say, Tiwi, why did you do that on me? You shouldn't have done that. And then Tiwi looks up at me with these big eyes and it's like as if, you know, I didn't realize that was wrong. I just did it because I love you. You know, and just seeing that love in her eyes, you know, that she's, you know, wanting to please you. And it's kind of to, with all your, all the animals that you love, whether it's ones in nature or, or your pet at home, it is in a sense to try and understand them and try to hear what they're saying to you. Try and read them. Because I, I think that's so important for us. Because sometimes when your pet is not feeling the best. It is for you to try and understand what is wrong. You know, not to wait and put it off and say, oh, well, in a few days time or in a week's time, if, if my little dog or cat is not its usual self, well, then I'll go and bring it to the vet or then I will try and find out what is wrong. I would always say to you, try and find out what is wrong straight away. You know, it's like in a sense, I would often see the angels kneel down beside an animal and, you know, then see a person come over and kneel down beside their pet. And I would see the angels helping that human being to 
connect with the animal and to understand what is what is wrong. And many a people would say to me, you know, I know my pet has a tummy ache or I know my pet, its little leg is hurting, even though it's not limping or anything. They would just say it's like a language telepathically that the animal is giving you and telepathically you are going into the animal's little mind as well to understand where the pain is or where the hurt is and sometimes maybe even to run your hand gently over your pet to see where you feel the pain and as soon as you feel it you know that your animal is really in pain. Your little dog or your little pet, it's just so important to listen to them and to pick up what they are saying to you or what you are saying to them telepathically or, or what you are, are feeling. As I said, you know, when you run your hand over them and you may not even have to put your hand down on their body, you know, um, to pet them in that way. But maybe your hand is a, a little bit above and you're moving your hand across their body and you can pick up that pain and you can ask your guardian angel to help you so that you know where your animal is hurting your little pet and you can pick it up ever so gently you know i've met i always remember this this young man and he's saying to me lorna i walk through the fields every day you know, and he said, I'm getting to know the animals. I'm getting to know all the farm animals, he said, and they're getting to recognize me. But he said, I'm getting to notice and recognize the animals in nature. At first, when I went across the fields, the rabbits would all run away, you know, but now they're not running away so much. And that's a, a relationship that you're having with nature as well you know, because they know you're not going to harm them, you're not going to hurt them. And it's the same with your pet. Your pet trusts you completely. It knows you're not going to harm it, you're not going to hurt it. It knows you're going to take care of it, you're going to love it. And all it wants to do is please you. It wants to make you happy. It wants to do funny things. It wants, in a sense, to, you know, make you smile and make you laugh. Even when you say to your, your dog or your cat or your horse, you know, whatever pet it is, and you're going for a walk and you're bringing it for a walk or you're riding, going to bring the horse out to ride, in a sense. Um, and you can bring all kinds of pets for walks, by the way, not just dogs and cats. I've seen many cats on leads going for walks and sometimes they just follow the owner on no lead at all. But you can always bring a little pet in your pocket for a walk. And that's something I have often done many, many times. Sometimes I would have a little bird in my pocket or a little critter, something that God had given me from nature to take care of until it got well enough to let it go. And it's always just something so beautiful to do, you know, or you're carrying your bag. I used to have these bags that I still have, you know, they're kind of a shoulder bag, but they're big. And often I would have something in the bag. And every now and then, um, what I always loved, what I would have in the bag, its little head would come up and have a little peep out. And to me, that is so cute, but yet, that little animal that I was looking after knew it was safe, that it was with me and I was taking care of it. And it would never jump out of the bag. It would just go back down in, into the bag in that, in that way. And it's for you yourself to build up your relationship with your pet. You know, um, make that contact stronger so that when you go out into nature, nature itself knows that you are a good person. You are not going to harm it or hurt it. And I bet you, you will notice the animals that are wild will get to know you.
So I would just say to you, you know, when you go for a walk with your dog or you're out on a horse or you have something in your pocket, you know, stop and hesitate for it a little while and sit down if there is a place to sit like a little wall and you have your dog beside you. Um, just what, what would I say? It is to connect more to the pet that you have. It's like that you and your pet become one, you know, so that you know what your pet needs, but your pet knows what you need. And animals are just great for that because they know when you're sad, they know when you're feeling down, and they do their utmost best to cheer you up. But remember, when they're feeling sad or they're feeling down, you yourself have to recognize that and do everything you can to cheer them up. And that could be, you know, you haven't brought your pet for a walk for a few days and it's starting to feel a little sad because you haven't, you know. So cheer your pet up and bring it out for a walk. You know, it's friendship that we need. We need the friendship with all of nature and we need friendship with the pets that we have at home and to take care of them and to love them. Because remember, they trust you completely just so completely they trust you in every single way and when you come home they're so delighted to see you i know my little dog tiwi she flies around the place when i go back to my house now and open the door and um, she'll be flying through all of the rooms and around me in circles and everything and jumping up just so excited i'm home so when you go home you be excited as well to see your pet and give it a love and a hug. You know, it's kind of to build that friendship up. And I know when we lose an animal that we have loved so much, it hurts. It really hurts because we miss them. And I know sometimes, you know, someone else that has never had a pet finds that hard to understand but it's the relationship that you have built up with your pet. Your pet became part of the family, a member of the family. And I love that when we do that with animals, but we need to do that with nature as well. And I know we can, and I know we are. So I will leave you there and I will say, God bless you and love you and love your pet dearly and love nature. Love you. Thank mm -hmm. you.